those delightful chaps whom everyone understandably adores over there at the Australian Tax Office have released the new limits pertaining to GST, FBT and LCT, all of the wonderful car taxes, for the next financial year, the one ending in 2025. Now, this is something you really, really need to know if you are planning on buying or novated leasing a new car before or after the 30th of June. In other words, that's right, this might be a new record for me. Most boring video ever. Yes, let's hope. Please don't hate me, dude, or do. I don't really care. Details next. I'm Jim Pedogan from AutoExpert.com.au, new cars cheap and Australia-only website card. I was talking to Bevo, the boss of Novated Lease Australia, earlier this week, and he tipped me off about the ATO and it announcing its new car tax limits for the next financial year. We'll get to that in just a sec, but hey, credit where it's due. Not sponsored, okay? But Novated Leasing is a great option for salaried employees. It's the cheapest way to get behind the wheel of a new car for many Australians, and it's also a pretty neat way for employers to reward their workers because it doesn't cost the business a bomb. Now, essentially, you do not pay the GST up to six and a bit thousand bucks on any car that you novate. So that's a pretty significant upfront saving right there. Full details at autoexpert.com.au slash novated. Plus, with a novated lease, you get to use some of your salary, which you would otherwise have paid in tax, to fund the procurement of the car. That's always kind of nice. And you can run all of the maintenance, from the fuel and the servicing to the rego and the insurance, in exactly this way, sidestepping the GST and funding the whole thing in part with money that you would otherwise have handed to the ATO. If you buy an EV or a plug-in hybrid, which is also called a PHEV or just a FEV in the vernacular, you will also sidestep any fringe benefits tax or FBT provided the car comes in under the luxury car tax threshold for green cars, which is a little under 90 grand in this financial year and a little over 90 for 2024-25. We'll get to that in detail as well. And finally, if you plan on getting a ute or some other quasi light commercial, the official payload capacity in the specs for that vehicle has to come in under a thousand kilos. If it's over a thousand, you just can't novate it. More info at autoexpert.com.au slash novated. Just fill in the form. There's absolutely no obligation. I'll just get a novated leasing expert from Novated Lease Australia to give you a call and spell it all out so you know where you stand. It's kind of painless. This part of the report applies to tax limits and cars generally, not just to novated leases, and it includes outright purchase, business tax deductibility, etc., all forms of ownership and tax and how that works. So we'll do GST first. Before the 30th of June this year, the maximum GST you can claim on any car is $6,191. This equates to a car costing $68,108. That is, it's one eleventh of the 68,108, which is how GST works. As an absurd example, a successful drug dealer or something might still be able to buy that purple Lamborghini of his dreams, but if he does, he's only entitled to claim $6,191 out of the roughly $30,000 in GST, which might be applicable to a car like that. A modest rise is, frankly, all the ATO has allowed after the 30th of June. This year's $6,191 is going to rise to $6,334 in the new financial year. And this equates to a vehicle costing $69,674. That's probably not much of a reason to hold off until after June 30, at least not for most people. If you procure the car for business, either wholly 
or partially before June 30, you probably get to claim some of that depreciation in this financial year, which will probably outweigh the extra $143, which the tax office has generously put on the table for GST in the new financial year. And if you've ever wondered why these limits seem to be the product of some, I don't know, random number generator, it's simply because the ATO indexes them each year according to the fraction of the consumer price index related to motor vehicle purchase prices. The upshot of that is for the 2025 financial year that is imminent. They took the 2024 financial year limit and they multiplied by a factor of 1.023 because mathematics and statistics. Luxury car tax now. The LCT is a kind of lingering ethical fraud at this point. It was brought in back on July the 1st of 2000, piggybacking the introduction of the GST, and its purpose was to protect the local new car manufacturers. Nissan had already shut up shop eight odd years ago, I think, but Ford, Toyota and Holden were still in business at that stage. And through the prism of hindsight, I think we can all agree the LCT was spectacularly ineffective. The local manufacturers shuttered their factories here in 2016 and 2017, of course, and yet the tax protecting them lingers on. Kind of like the toll on the Sydney Harbour Bridge, now that I think about it, which was implemented to pay off the bridge. Australia borrowed the money for the bridge, right? And then a toll was to pay it off. Pro tip there, the bridge was actually paid off, can you guess? 36 long years ago. So well done, New South Wales government. The LCT is just another beacon to government integrity, I guess, and I doubt it's going to go away anytime soon. And let's not forget that all other aspects of luxury, from handbags and wristwatches to homewares, houses, and even executive frickin' helicopters, remain unburdened by any specific luxury tax pertaining to those products. Go figure. Why cars? You have to ask yourself in 2024-25. For added hilarity, there are not one but two LCT limits, one for green cars and one for all other cars. The green car LCT limit will rise from $89,332 to $91,387 on the 30th of June, which is also modest. The LCT threshold for all other cars will go from $76,950 to $80,567. However, it is quite important to know exactly what this figure is and precisely what it includes, especially if you are hoping to capitalise on the zero FBT aspect of a novated lease on an EV or a plug-in hybrid. Because if you blow this calculation by just $1, right, you will not get that zero FBT benefit. Essentially, the LCT limit includes the list price of the car, the dealer delivery, the GST, accessories and treatments that go on the car before delivery, and any fleet-type rebates if they are forthcoming. But it does not include rego, CTP, stamp duty, other taxes and finance costs. This is not exactly straightforward, right? But it is something you'd want to measure twice and get absolutely right before signing any critical paperwork because you need to come in under that limit if you want to sidestep what would otherwise be an FBT obligation. Finally, now just as a bit of general guidance, if you are sitting on the fence about EVs and plug-in hybrids, I'd suggest considering the following four points. Upfront cost is a huge barrier to entry to these vehicles for many buyers. But for salaried employees who take advantage of the tax incentives offered with a novated lease, a 70,000 buck EV or plug-in hybrid ends up costing you about the same to own each week out of your take-home pay as some sort of middle-of-the-road Corolla or Mazda 3. 
So it is a great leveller. EVs are logistically a pain for regional travel and also if you don't have an off-street charging solution, typically at home or the office. The infrastructure is simply not there in the regions and if it is, it gets quickly overwhelmed during peak periods such as long weekends or Christmas, Easter, school holidays, etc. In these cases, a plug-in hybrid makes real sense because it drives like an EV, like with no tailpipe emissions during the daily commute for most people, but you can then run it on liquid fuel kind of endlessly without plugging it in once on longer regional trips. The term hybrid is actually a pretty ambiguous one in the automotive domain. And here, the details really matter as well. The zero FBT incentive on Novated Leases is only applicable to full battery EVs and plug-in hybrids. In other words, mild hybrids and conventional hybrids, which you can't plug in, they're just not eligible for this benefit. So your RAV4 or Camry hybrid, for example, neither of which plugs in will not attract the zero FBT concession. Finally, and this is fundamentally important, I think you have to have a good hard look at your particular vehicle use case and then examine if one of these newer fuel efficient vehicles is gonna fit the kind of driving that you are going to do. Like that is to me at least the fundamental consideration in play. It's dead easy to get wrapped up in all of the virtue and the tax benefit and things of this nature, but if the vehicle doesn't do the driving that you need it to do, it's going to be a fail. Like, if it does, awesome. Tax benefit, here we come. And there are an increasing number of people who could easily get away with a newer, greener kind of vehicle. So, yay, save the planet, whatever. And derive that tax benefit, go for it. It's on the table for a reason. If they're throwing money at you, you might as well catch. But if it doesn't, there's going to be a whole lot of real-world sacrifices that you will need to make virtually every day in exchange for those tax concessions. So the place to start is, will that EV or plug-in hybrid actually do your kind of driving. This to me is a super important fundamental consideration that many people simply overlook.